out today and do some shock testing with it. Uh, so we're out here in Arizona. Uh, we were doing some high speed stuff this morning. Now we're in a little sandy wash. Uh, we set up the uh, compression and rebound nice and smooth. So it's pretty happy with the ride. But uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of spooky driving a, a vehicle that they don't have a cost for it. <laughs> so I'm really concerned about the paint job right now. So we're trying to take it easy. And then I'll go out and have some fun fast stuff. I'm standing with Mel Wade, owner of Evo MFG, and as luck would have it, he's getting to test out Sandstorm, the 2018 Baja-inspired concept vehicle that was released at Easter Jeep Safari. Now, for those of you who don't know, Evo MFG was responsible for designing much, if not all, of the suspension components on this extremely awesome rig, and today, Mel's going to tell us a little bit about it. So Mel, why don't you give us a heads up as to what happened and how you got this project and what are we looking at? Uh, so this is a sandstorm uh, that we got to work with the great guys over at uh, the design team at Jeep. Uh, Mark Allen is the top guy over there, great guy, and, and, and Chris and some of the designers over there are just awesome to be able to work with. They called up and asked if I was interested in a special project with uh, Fiat Chrysler. They really don't give you too much information, so I said, heck yeah. So anyways, they wanted something uh, Go Fast inspired. Uh, since we did Baja a couple times in a Jeep and, and the desert races, uh, they said they wanted something functional. So when you go out there, it can actually go fast. And uh, so we went ahead and we did a quiller bypass in the front, real similar like our, our off-the-shelf kits. Uh, designed it, you know, spoofed it up a little bit for the uh, for the show vehicle. So this is the traditional coil or bypass shock with a coilover on it. Ooh, these are hot. So we kept these. We actually made this one for this one since we're going to keep it lower. We made the towers uh, four inches taller than normal. So they're actually taller. We gusset, we uh, opened them up for some for some uh, lightness. Uh, the axles, everything's pushed forward uh, four inches. Uh, Mopar did a little bump stops on it. We're going to be bumping out on our on our regular shocks like we normally do. Uh, we'll might lead it on there. They actually worked out perfect today for this. One of the things that's got modified was we actually made this bracket and pushed the steering box further forward uh, four inches. Normally it mounts back in those holes. So we pushed it further forward. They had to make a custom radiator to clear all that. Uh, so that got pushed forward with the axle being pushed forward four inches. And then we did a trailing arm setup that we've had out for a little bit. Trailing arms were to coil over and a bypass mount on the, on the trailing arm itself. Uh, it works almost like a two to one ratio. So out of a 12 inch shock, we can get about 24, 22 inches, depending on where we limit strap it. On the rear, I don't know if you can get in here, kind of see a cutaway view almost. On the rear, we did a coil over bypass. So the coil spring and the coil over uh, mount to the control arm. So right here on the control arm, the pivot points way back here and there. It works on almost a two to one ratio. So it works as a lever. Um, you get more wheel travel out of a smaller shock. So this one is actually Frenched into the frame with these towers. So we can get the coilover bypasses on the external side of the frame uh, on the outside. We did the air bumps back here uh, all the way as far out as we possibly could. Uh, still clears our tires. 
Uh, downside for the consumer aspect of it, you have to run a fuel cell or a different tank. So that's a little bit of a negative, but it's four linked, uh, triangulated up on top, straight links on the bottom for the trailing arm. So we're out here in our local testing spot. This is where I test Evo 1 and our other race cars for get it prepped up for desert stuff. So we got pretty big whoops, uh, some G out, some stuff like that. Uh, so we took it out here and uh, really happy with it. So this one out of the get go, um, without being a full tube cage rigid chassis is already faster in my opinion that we're already getting out of our, my race car that we've been doing so uh, definitely new newer technology coming out to the, to the Jeep side uh, a little bit more travel uh, people aren't afraid to cut up their car so much now so uh, yeah the trailing are kind of a cool system on this sandstorm so definitely functional uh, we were clocked uh, Harley was in there clocking us well over uh, 55 60 miles an hour through this big stuff and there's plenty more it was just at a certain point you know I, I want to be responsible uh, and we should have race gear on it at a certain point. So yeah, this thing is just just awesome. The, the 392, they put a stick in it. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about a stick shift. But after uh, playing around today, it was kind of fun. Uh, I smelt the clutch a couple of times, sorry. Uh, but, um, you know, it was able to break them loose whenever you want to. If you have the talent to be able to drive a stick, boom, you lay into it. We could, I could pitch it sideways. Uh, I caught myself misshifting a couple of times, of course. That's where my talent ran out. But, uh, Awesome day out here, you know, beautiful 110 degree day out here. <laughs> Thank you.